welcome back to Tech Talks Podcast. I'm Tech Lovett, your host, and here we are still in this book. I know it's been a while. We're spending a lot of time in this because I really want us to um, soak in God's love. And we're in Joseph Prince's book, Grace Revolution, and um, he really is just, I don't know, thoroughly talking about God's love and grace and forgiveness and and um, living under grace versus living under sin. It's been really good. And I want to pop in and just share with you a few highlighted moments. <clears throat> okay. And we're on page uh, 89. And <clears throat> I like this highlighted moment. And of course, I'll probably show it to you on the screen um, right here. And this is chapter six. Why preach grace? I like how he says, don't base your understanding of God's heart toward you on hearsay or man's opinion. Base it on the unshakable and internal foundation of his word. I love that because the world has their own opinion of God. And they have their own counterfeits of peace and joy in Jesus and God. And... um Sorry, you hear my dog Gurren over there because he sees his reflection in the, in the window and he's Gurren at himself. I know. Silly dog. Andy. Andy. Shh. Andy. Shh. Sorry, guys. Um, so, I just want to encourage you to read the Gospels and read for yourself what Jesus is saying because it's so easy to um, to get confused with your own doctrine, your own beliefs, what you're telling yourself. It's so easy to self-sabotage, um, you know, anything that you hear good because a lot of times I think, I know for me, for my problem, I have a problem receiving anything good freely because I think this world has made it known that anything good that you have, you have to work for or earn. So it's really hard for me sometimes to even accept that God loves me truly because I feel like that performance-driven girl says, well, you haven't really worked that well or you haven't really worked on trusting God. You you need to work more on that or you need to, to relinquish more control and and trust him more which is good don't get me wrong all those things are good but I think it's when I when I feel like I have to really work and rely on myself to get there and not really relying on the Holy Spirit getting me there and relinquishing um, all that to him and trusting him to help me to trust and believe and rely on him. Um, you know, because I'm still trying to rely on me and my efforts and my strength to gain God's peace. When really, I need to just relinquish that and rely on the Holy Spirit and, and having him come in and work through me instead of me trying to be him in a sense. Does that, does that make sense? Like, I don't need to be the Holy Spirit in my life. I need to just allow the Holy Spirit to be the Holy Spirit in my life. And um, <clears throat> and I hope that made sense. But that's something I'm learning to let go. I'm learning to let go of me thinking I have to be in control and and to be more pleasing and acceptable to God. Because here's the trick. I already am. And there's a lot of things I need to work through still of understanding that. Okay, um, enough rambling, I guess. Page 94, um, the defeated life trapped in a cycle of sin. I want to read to you a little bit here, okay? So bear in mind, I'm just trying to read and, and I'm trying to do my best, you guys, to encourage more people to trust in God, okay? All right. How do born-again believers who sincerely want to live holy lives still end up trapped in a cycle of sin and living a defeated life? 
I believe that it is because they receive condemnation for their failings and do not know or believe that God himself does not condemn them because of the cross of Jesus. Show me someone who lives under constant condemnation and I will show you someone who is always struggling with sin. You see, the more believers live in condemnation, the more they actually become entrenched in a vicious cycle of sin, condemnation, and defeat. Let me explain what I mean with a simple illustration. Let's say a believer is suffering I mean, sorry, let's say a believer is surfing the internet one day when he chan chances upon pornogra uh, pornographic, I mean, sorry, I'm so sorry, <sighs> images and looks at them longer than he should. Before he knows it, lustful thoughts tumble across his mind. At the same time, since he is a born again Christian, he starts to feel guilty and condemned. He tells himself, I shouldn't have looked at the images. I should have, I sh shouldn't be having all these unholy thoughts. Oh, I'm such a lousy Christian. God must be so disappointed with me. The more he heaps guilt and condemnation on himself, the more he reasons, what's the point of resisting? I'm a terrible Christian. And since I'm already guilty, and fellowship with God is broken, I might as well go all the way. What does he do? He clicks on one of the image links, which takes him to a pornographic website, and he indulges his fleshly desires. Now he feels all the more guilty and condemned, and even more convinced that God is angry with him and has distanced himself from him. All this guilt and alienation from God just make him more susceptible to fail the next time he faces a similar temptation. There is no power to overcome subsequent temptations and his indulgences quickly develop into an addiction that imprisons him in perpetual guilt and self-condemnation. He knows he has a problem but is just too ashamed of his secret sin to approach anyone for help. This is basically how many sincere believers end up trapped in a cycle of sin and condemnation. And then he talks about a cycle of defeat con uh, diagram on page 97. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll go down. The truth is those who are under constant guilt and condemnation have no strength to overcome temptation and end up repeating their sins and living a painful life trapped in a cycle of defeat. Yeah, I, I can understand that. And then on page 96, we're going to talk a little bit about the victorious life breaking the cycle of defeat. Okay. Um, my dear reader, the first step to victory is to realize and believe that because the Lord Jesus has already taken the punishment for all your sins at the cross, you don't have to be bound and driven by guilt, condemnation, or fear. Every failure of yours has already been punished in Jesus' body, and you have perpetual forgiveness and intimacy with God through Christ's blood. This is the power of right believing in the gospel that will lead you to inside-out transformation and lasting breakthroughs. Amen. And that is why he preaches grace over and over and over. And you can't get enough of that. Okay. All right. I'm just going to leave this uh, short and sweet and say a little prayer for us. And then we'll be on our way. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your un unfailing um, forgiveness and love and all the works that you've already done on the cross Lord, help us to receive and help us to believe and trust and rely on you, Jesus. For you truly want to set us free. But the only problem is we have a hard time believing and receiving this. Lord, help us to believe right so that we may um, receive correctly. 
in you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you next time here at Tech Talks Podcast. Thank you.